now we will be talking about the second half of the transformer that is a decoder so we have already discussed about an encoder in my previous video and like in a previous section so you can check that out uh, if not uh, so uh, there will be a few concept that we will be uh, deriving directly from it and won't be explaining them again so it'd be a good idea to go and explore that so let's discuss about what is a decoder's role and what is its architecture and how it's working so basically uh, for decoder it's we are talking to, uh, about uh, while training so we take outputs uh, we generate an output embedding at the positional encoding then uh, similar to an encoder where we have four layers getting repeated here we are getting six layers repeated mass multi-head attention add norm mass uh, multi-head attention add norm feed forward add norm uh, which gets repeated again for nx number of times so how many uh, like whatever is n for encoder the same number would be repeated for decoder as well followed by linear and softmax layer so out of this we already know that what is a positional encoding thing uh, multi multi attention uh, multi attention head we have already know add and normalize add normalization layer feed forward and add norm was uh, something which was similar in encoder also so we have already discussed it so we would be skipping this part in this particular video let's first of all start from the input that is going in the major aim of a decoder is to determine the output sequence tokens one at a time so um, assume that we are working on some uh, speech translation where we uh, wish to convert text from uh, English to German. Now, uh, in that case, uh, for this particular translation, the decoder would be using two, two major things. One is the attention that is coming from the encoder, whatever we have learned from uh, the encoder, which, uh, which text is more important, which tokens are important. The second thing would be the total predicted tokens as of now. Try to understand this. So the, the decoder is uh, predicting tokens one at a time. It is not predicting the entire sequence uh, altogether. Uh, it is predicting the sequence uh, uh, tokens one at a time. So assume that uh, we have uh, some uh, some English sentence that we have uh, for uh, we are predicting or uh, translating tra German. Uh, say uh, I am a boy, and its general translation it's uh, uh, I by B. Okay, now in that case it has four to five tokens in the translation. So uh, in that case it uh, the decoder would be using the attention from the encoder as well as the previously predicted token so uh, uh, in the first instance in the first iteration uh, nothing would be predicted right so uh, once we are able to predict the first token uh, then uh, in the next token when we would be predicting so we would be using the first token the previous token as well as attention coming from the encoder so we'll understand what is happening so uh, before feeding in the output uh, let's understand what is the input that is going in a decoder for now uh, because in encoder so we have that input sentence only but what is going in the decoder as an input so outputs is the numerical representation of the output sequence generated right which is right shifted which is getting predicted for now so for example uh, i think this is a bit confusing and we need to focus a bit on this there are two things that would be coming uh, when we are predicting a sequence uh, how we are get, using it as an input so what happens is that uh, in a decoder uh, we are padding the entire sequence with an uh, beginning of a sentence and an end of a sentence token right to determine whether the sentence is end, uh, ended or begin or, or like beginning or not so uh, the while predicting the first token right as i told you earlier uh, in decoder we need two things one is attention from the encoder as well as the previously predicted tokens now in case of the first token there is no previous token to use right so in that case uh, we are padding the entire uh, sentence uh, the outputs uh, we are assuming the padding to uh, with two tokens that is beginning of sentence and end of sentence so for uh, for the first token we would be using beginning of sentence as an input uh, for the decoder so the outputs would represent beginning of a sentence token uh, it can be any uh, it can be any symbol or etc now once we have uh, used this um, beginning of sentence token now when we will need to predict the first token this beginning of sentence becomes the previous token of the output sequence makes sense so the input that is going in the decoder is the previously predicted tokens now if it is the first token it is uh, the beginning of a sentence uh, token or symbol that we would be inserting so it's sort of a padding that we're providing while fitting in while uh, while uh, while training our models and this is what we call as right shifted so the output uh, sequence is uh, getting right shifted because we are adding a new token that is beginning of sentence so i'm uh, i'm assuming you must have got it so in a decoder uh, it uses 
the uh, information from the encoder as well as the attention that is calculated in the encoder as well as the previously predicted tokens now for now for the first token it would be bos for the second token it would be bos and bos that is beginning of sentence and the first token that is predicted using the bos now for the third token it would be bos plus the second next two sentences uh, next two tokens that are predicted for the fourth one similarly so the output that is this output uh, shifted right that uh, the in that is going in in this attention mass attention head in this decoder is that only the previous tokens that we have predicted for uh, uh, at a particular point now what is mass multi head attention i like uh, what i'm doing is that i'm uh, i'm like skipping out the part that i've already explained in encoder in the encoder part of the video so you can watch it out uh, mass multi head attention uh, differs slightly from multi head uh, attention so uh, in case of a decoder if you notice uh, what happens is that uh, at a particular point we don't have the future tokens with us so for example if you are uh, if you look at this example if we wish to translate i am good into french j y is bane and the translation has reached ways that is the second token makes sense so uh, by second token we mean that we haven't pre forecast we haven't predicted the third token yet we have predicted j we have predicted ways we haven't predicted the third token so in case of mass multi head attention what we are doing is that we would be masking the uh, attention that would be calculated for bind uh, so we would be assuming that the sentence is just two tokens long for now and this is would be called as masked multi head attention uh, now uh, it's good uh, like we have understood what is the input that is going in the decoder what is masked multi head attention so masked multi head attention as i told you earlier while training to we know ki what is the input and what is the output sentence that we are expecting uh so eventually uh, while generating mass uh, uh, attention in the decoder what we're doing is that whatever token that has not been predicted yet in the iteration we won't be con considering their attention that is the crux of the mass multi head attention we are masking that part of the entire sequence right uh, now uh, the major query that remains is that how are we using the input from encoder the the output that is coming from an encoder in the decoder so what we are doing is that in the attention layer as we have discussed uh, the multi head attention that is present in the decoder's architecture after the mass multi head attention what we are doing that the output of the encoder that uh, n cross uh, that matrix that we are getting for attention we would be considering that as the key and the value matrix for this multi head attention in the decoder makes sense and the query matrix uh would be taken from the mass multi head attention layer that is present previously i think this can be a bit confusing try to understand this so if you look at the architecture of a decoder in this particular point where we are heading up multi head attention uh so in as we have discussed earlier multi head attention requires three things query key and value so the query and uh, the the key and the value matrices would be coming from encoder how the output of the encoder is taken as key and value matrix both right now we are remaining with query query matrix how we are getting that the query matrix we are getting from mass multi head attention so whatever has been whatever value for query has been calculated in mass multi head attention we would be considering that in the multi head attention uh, layer as well so eventually if you notice there is no training going on multi head attention for decoder majorly because uh, what is happening is it is using the pre trained values so the training for query has already been done in mass is mass attention layer and for key and value the training has been done in the encoder part so it is uh, fetching the pre trained values from the two worlds so it is using these two things to calculate its at multi head attention in the decoder layer so as the query vector uh, would be available just for the seen tokens for now predicted tokens for now uh, the multi head attention layer won't be also considering uh, the few uh, the future tokens Uh, while calculating the attention for the tokens so for example the rest of the code is pretty easy where we have got a normalization layer feed forward layer normalization layer that i have already explained in my previous videos as well in this video uh, in the encoder part so the entire uh, code block that is getting repeated in a decoder is mass multi head attention plus normalization multi head attention plus normalization and feed forward network plus normalization six layers are getting repeated for six times after this code block is repeated for six sixth time we have got two more layers one is a linear layer followed by a softmax function now this softmax functions gives us the probability for the most suitable token that should be followed in the output uh, output 
sequence that we have now once we are able to uh, get this particular new token okay, okay this is the next token that we uh, that we have forecasted for that we are predicted for the output sequence that particular token is considered in the output that if you remember uh, and uh, in the, for the for the prediction of the next token this token would also be considered in the input that is getting considered for the decoder right so if you look at this the current team of decoder is to predict the third token of the output when the third token is predicted it goes to the tail of the output sequence and a new iteration starts so there are multiple iterations going on so once you are able to predict a new token that token goes back into the chain and eventually once you when you are trying to predict the fourth token this third token is already being considered in the attention layers now because now the uh, decoder has already no key okay this is the token that i have uh, this is the token is seen for me this is no longer a future token for me uh, similarly until analysis iteration goes on until analysis, an end of sentence token is predicted by the model determining ki, okay the uh, the sequence ends here so uh, if the end of the sentence token doesn't get predicted the iteration for for uh, prediction goes on and on uh, predicting one token at a time and once we are able to get the once we hit the end of sentence uh, prediction token prediction we stop there